Hi and welcome to my Python YouTube channel. It's awesome to have you here. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be great. And make sure to subscribe for future videos. I also have a blog at prospercoder.com with lots of cool stuff, so feel free to check it out. In the previous part we left off with the basic Kiwi app that displays a label. In this part we're going to talk about label properties. You can also read the written version of this video on my Python programming blog at prosperacoder.com. Ok, so here's the code again. This is the Python file and this is the Kiwi file. This program displays a label. Let's have a look at how it looks. Just a label. The label has a text property. This is a special Kiwi property, not to be confused with a regular Python property. We're going to use Kiwi properties a lot and even create our own ones, just bear with me. Anyway, the label class has some more properties. We're going to have a look at the label properties in this part and then in the next part we'll see how to use other widgets like buttons, toggle buttons, checkboxes, text inputs and sliders, both in Python and in the Kiva language. These are the widgets we'll be making use of in our project. But there are many others, which you can look up in the documentation which you can find at kiwi.org. And now let's have a closer look at the label class and the label properties. You already know the text property. It's used to set the actual text you want to display. By the way, you probably noticed that the name of the property is followed by a colon and then comes the value we want to set the property to. This same syntax is valid for all the other properties. Now let's have a look at some other label properties. The next property I'd like to mention is font size. The name is pretty self-explanatory. Let me just add that the value is in pixels. Let's add this property to the code in our KV file. So, font size fifty. Fine. Let's save. If you run the program now, naturally from the Python file, the label displayed will be much bigger than before. You can change the color of the text using the color property. What is really interesting about this property, however, is its value, which is a list of four elements for red, green, blue and alpha. The default value is a list of four ones, so one for red, one for green, one for blue, one for alpha, which corresponds to fully opaque white. The values for each component are in the range from 0 to 1, which probably is not exactly what you are used to. In a lot of frameworks, the values for R, G, B and A are from 0 to 255. Here, it is your task to recalculate the values so that they fit in the range between 0 and 1. Just keep in mind that 0 is the same in both ranges and 255 in the traditional scale corresponds to 1 in Kiwi. So if you want the color to be a shade of purple where the values are for example something like this. This is for red, for green, for blue and for alpha. Naturally, this part here is not part of the code. And now you can either calculate the Kiwi values manually, like so. This number divided by 255. And here you have the appropriate value in the range between 0 and 1. Or type the operations directly in the list. So in our case, you could set the color like so. using these values or using the calculations 
inside the list. You can use whichever approach you like. I like the second one better because I'm used to the 0 to 255 range, but I'm going to use them interchangeably throughout the project so that you can get used to both of them. So now let's get rid of this. We don't need this. Let's indent. And here we have our color property. Now, if you run the program now, after saving this file, of course, the color of the text will be a bit different. Purple, right. There are lots of other properties that you can use with the label class. Some of them will be used in the project, and I'll talk a little more about them when we need them. There is, however, one very interesting property that we're not going to use in the app, and which is definitely worth mentioning. That's why I'd like to tell you something about it now. You can style your text using text markup. This is very similar to what you may be familiar with if you know some HTML. However, instead of angled brackets, we use square brackets in Kili. Just like in HTML, there's an opening tag and a closing tag. There are lots of tags available. Have a look at just a small selection. So let me copy that here and temporarily paste it over here. As before, this is not part of the code. So here are some of the available tags. We can have bold text, italic, underline, strike through, subscript, superscript. We can also set the size of the font and text color. Fine, let's get rid of this. Now, in order to use the text markup, you must add one more property, markup, and set it to true. So, let's do it. Markup true. Now we can use text markup. Now let's change the text to something like this. It's pretty long. As you can see here, I'm using the text. Opening tag for bold, closing tag for bold. Opening tag for italic, closing tag for italic, and so on. And now, this is quite long. And now let me run this program. So save the file, go to main.py, run. Good. Normal bold italic underline strike through subscript superscript big and yellow. So I'm using all the tags I showed you before. Now two things to keep in mind. First, the value of the text property, which is this string over here, should be all on a single line. And second, in text markup, we use hex values for colors. So if the RGBA for yellow is 255, 255, 0, 255, this is fully opaque, then its hexadecimal representation is FFOF which you can see over here in the tag. Also notice that there are new line characters inside the string, like here, like here. So this is all possible with text markup. Well, we've been working with just one basic widget so far, the label. But there are lots of other useful widgets, like buttons, toggle buttons, checkboxes, text inputs, sliders, and many, many more. We're going to use some of them in our application, so in the following parts I'll show you some of the widgets that we're going to use and some of the most important properties. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.